So today we're going to be talking about derivatives of tri uh, trigonometric functions. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, as you do now, what I want you to do is, can you explain sine of, uh, of an angle A plus B? Uh, so for, that would be the first question. Mm -hmm. And the second question would be, evaluate the given expression. Limit uh, of sine of x over x as x approaches 0. In this case, x, is, x will be in the radian measures. All right, so let me give you a little bit of time to, uh, for you to remember uh, how all these things were expressed. All right. Now, uh, assuming that uh, you already uh, got the answer, well, we're going to get started. So what is sine of a plus b? If you remember, this one was the sum uh, of the angles for uh, sine function. So that's equal to sine of a times cosine of b. Now, sine will be exactly the same plus, and we just have to switch the angle. So we have, we have sine of b and then cosine of a. That's it. That's all we have to do. How about the second one? Uh, this, we actually talked about it already in the um, limit video. Uh, limit of a sine of x over x as x approaches 0. Through the squeeze theorem, we realized that this one was equal to simply 1. Now, uh, why did I uh, give you these questions? In fact, uh, as the uh, topic uh, says, derivative of trig functions requires, uh, this topic requires for us to know these two things, and we'll try to continue from here. So therefore, for example, number three would have been something like this. Uh, can you find the derivative, maybe I'll say find, the derivative of, let us say, y equals uh, sine of x. I'm talking about dy over dx. Now, since we do not know what it is yet, uh, what we have to do is this. Here, dy over dx. Uh, would have been, we just have to use the difference portion. Uh, as x approaches. So, or in fact, instead of saying uh, x, why don't I call it as h? And then sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. Now, why don't I give you a little bit of time for you to evaluate this, and then we're going to continue. All right, so uh, if you continue in this uh, expression, you will, we will get something like this. There it goes. So we have limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x cosine of h plus sine of h and then cosine of x and minus sine of x all over h. Now notice here we have uh, sine of x here common with another sine of x. Then what we can do is maybe we can uh, express these two things by factoring it, uh, then we 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 get something quite interesting here. That is this. So once we have limit as h approaches zero, when you factor our sine sine of x, then we'll end up having cosine of h minus one, uh, and then plus. sine of h 
and cosine of x all over h. Now, but here we get to realize a couple of things. This, uh, since we essentially we have two terms in the numerator, we could have this one as one fraction, and this one can be another fraction. So then, by the property of limit, as h approaches 0, we get to, in fact, have two different expressions. Here we have sine of x times cosine of h minus 1 all over h plus sine of h over h times cosine of x. Now, here, you will realize that the first, from the first term, this uh, cosine of h minus 1 over h, uh, you will realize that as the h approaches 0, this is approaching, in fact, 0. While sine of h over h, as we have seen from do now, uh, this is approaching 1. Now, that means our final answer, this term cancels out because uh, cosine of h minus 1 over h approaches 0, as h approaches 0, um, while the other one simply becomes uh, cosine of x. So in fact, there it goes. Derivative of sine of x ends up being cosine of x. Now, then uh, we need to realize that, I guess, here. Uh, derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. <clears throat> then uh, let's try to look, at, look into the next question, number four. Here, number four would have been this. Uh, find dy over dx when y is equal to cosine of x. Now, we can use the same strategy as uh, previous question number three, meaning expressing uh, dy over dx as the uh, limit of the difference quotients difference quotient and uh, evaluate the uh, rest of them then we get to realize something so let's try to do that together here we have dy over dx must be equal to limit as x approaches zero. Oh, instead of saying x sorry about that you want to let's write it as h approaches zero for cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x and entire thing divided by h. Now, once you express this one, just like before, what we like to do is we like to uh, expand our cosine of x plus h. If you remember the identity, here we get cosine of x times cosine of h. We will in fact have opposite sign here, minus sine of x and sine of h. Minus cosine of x. An entire thing divided by h. Now, uh, just like earlier, uh, you see cosine of x here, and so is uh, the cosine of x right over there. Since those two our shares cosine of x, we can factor them out, then we get to realize limit as h approaches 0, and then let's uh, factor that out, cosine of, cosine of x and we are left with cosine of h minus 1 and entirety minus sine of x and this sign of h in pattern divided by h. Does this look somewhat familiar? This is a very similar structured expression as to the previous one. So in fact, uh, we get to realize that h will divide the term on the left and also term on the right with negative sign in the middle. 
then here we have limit as h approaches zero for the first one it will be cosine of x times cosine of h minus one over h as h approaches zero we know that what this value would have been minus sine of x times sine of h over h as h approaches zero so just like earlier we get to realize what the values are here we have this would be approaching zero hence the whole term entire term will be uh, approaching zero on the other hand here this approach is one so therefore what we will end up having is negative sine of x so in fact derivative of cosine of x would have been equal to neg uh, negative sine of x all right now then we uh, uh, came to the conclusion about two functions two trig functions out of in fact six yes we're talking about um, sine cosine tangent and inverse of those uh, three functions multiplicative inverse of those three functions uh, in a way that we're gonna we are looking at secant cosecant and then cotangent all right so uh, let's look at number five Question number five, then, will be this. Uh, let y equals to tangent of x. And then can you find y prime? Now, once again, I give you a little bit of time. We need to work on this one first. All right. So, uh, yes, uh, we're going uh, we to assume that you already have done it. Then, here how we're going to approach this. Uh, tangent of x, we can uh, go for the difference, uh, difference or limit of the difference quotient. Or another way of looking at it is this. Because we know the uh, derivative of sine and cosine. What if we have to let this one as y equals sine of x over cosine of x. And since we see a fraction, we could use the quotient rule to figure them out. Now, then here we have uh, y prime, according to the quotient rule, we will in fact have the cosine square x, and then here we will have uh, cosine of x, which is the derivative, uh, which is the denominator, multiplied by the der derivative of the top, which will be another cosine of x, minus numerator times sine of x derivative of the denominator which is negative sine of x you see derivative of cosine was the negative sine of x don't forget the negative sign then this will in fact becomes cosine square x minus minus becomes plus sine square x all over cosine square x now Oh, cosine squared plus sine squared. Oh, yes, that's equal to. Uh, this is Pythagorean identity of the uh, trig functions, which is equal to 1 over cosine squared x. Yes, so this will be our answer. But uh, many times, well, we tend to write this one as, instead of writing it as a fraction, we write this one as secant square x. So we found the third one. The derivative of the tangent is the secant square of the x. All right, then let us move on to the next question. Since we figured out our sine cosine tangent, uh, what will be the derivative of the uh, secant and then next one will be cosecant and the last one will be cotangent. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to leave these three questions as the uh, uh, practice questions, uh, even though I'm going to uh, let you know the answer, but uh, uh, we will leave uh, we will leave the, uh, what do you call that, uh, the derivation of how we can get the uh, derivative of secant, cosecant, and cotangent 
as a part of practice questions. So here, you know, y prime becomes secant x tangent x. Why don't you guys try to do that? That's, that, that would be actually quite fun. Here, uh, cosecant in fact becomes negative cosecant x and then cotangent x. Now, the third one, y prime of the cotangent becomes negative cosecant squared x. That's what we end up getting. All right. So, uh, with this, uh, we'll close up for now. Uh, in fact, uh, if you want to, uh, it would be great if you have to organize these six functions all together uh, and then make a chart out of it. Have a nice day. See you later.